Hello. Today, let's talk about walking wet in the world. Introduction: A chemical reaction. For over 5,000 years, virtually for as long as we've had recorded human history, we human beings have been coloring our clothes. <laughs> we have taken wool or silk or cotton or the like, and we've dyed it, colored it, using berries or cabbage, indigo or flowers, for example. We have enhanced our fabrics with color. Look around you. It seems that every single fiber is tinted. Rugs and robes, dresses and blouses, shirts and pants, natural fibers are beige or white or tan, but around us we see vibrant reds and yellows, majestic blues and purples. How was the transformation from natural to tinted accomplished? Well, Initially, fabrics were soaked in water, and a coloring agent was added, like berries or flowers, and, additional agree and an additional ingredient also included something probably like salt or vinegar. Then the fabric in this solution concoction was heated. The simmering might have lasted for days or even weeks, but finally a bonding took place. Today we call it a chemical reaction. The coloration of dye actually became part of the fibers of the fabric. Today, we're much more chemically sophisticated, but we use the same kind of process. The dye penetrates, permeates, and saturates the fabric. On a molecular level, a chemical reaction takes place. The fabric is fundamentally changed. It is permanently infused with living color. Look around you. Color. Beautiful. Remember this part for later, please. Point one, keep them in thy name. In this gospel text from John chapter 17, Jesus is praying for his disciples. Also, he's praying for us. Please notice what our Lord Jesus prays. John 17, verse 11. Keep them in thy name, the name which thou hast given to me, while I was with them, I was keeping them in thy name, which thou hast given to me. Now, what do you make of that? What does Jesus mean, keep them in thy name? Well, the name of God means the character of God and the person of God. The name means God himself. You are familiar with passages about the name of the Lord. For example, our help is in the name of the Lord, Psalm 124. That is, our help is in the character and in the person of the Lord. Abram called upon the name of the Lord, Genesis chapter 13. So Abraham trusted in the character and in the person of the Lord. Psalm 113 declares, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is, how worthy of praise are the character and the person of the Lord. And, of course, you know the commandment, You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Exodus 20. You shall not defile the character or the person of the Lord. Okay, so name is the character and person of God. What does the name of the Lord have to do with you and me? Ah, well, you see, when we were baptized, we were baptized into the name of the Lord. You were baptized into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please understand the word baptize, or in the Greek New Testament, baptizo, can refer to a sunken ship that is submerged. Now water is inside and outside and all around the ship. Also, paptizo may refer to a garment that is immersed in dye. Aha! Uh -huh. It becomes permanently tinted, chemically colored. So when you were baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you were immersed, permanently tinted, chemically colored with the name of God. Every fiber of your being was bonded to the character and the divine person of God. Wow, it's wonderful. Jesus did that to you in your baptism. 
In this prayer, Jesus is saying to the Father, I was keeping them in thy name, but now, Holy Father, you must keep them in thy name. Keep them, Father, in the divine name. That is, keep them in the holy character and the divine person of God. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are now your identity. The name of the Lord is your new color. The divine name is an essential part of your essence, your very being. So, Father, Jesus says, they are bonded to you, and you, Father, are bonded to them. In your baptism, God changed you. He tented you with heaven. God joins you to himself. It was not a chemical reaction. It was a spiritual reaction. And Jesus is saying to the Father, keep them in the name. Keep them in the immersion of their holy baptism. Pour over them again and again thy name, thy character, thy person, day after day, year after year. Pour over them those baptismal waters that they may walk wet. Yes, Father, may they walk wet in the character and person of God every moment of their lives. I think that is something of what Jesus is praying here for you. Point two, keep them from the evil one. In verse 12, Jesus prays to the Father, I guarded them, and in verse 14, Jesus says, and the world hated them. So verse 15, Jesus prays, keep them from the evil one. Our Lord Jesus does not ask that we be taken out of the world, no. He has a challenge and a purpose for us here. At this time and at this place in your life, Jesus wants you right where you are. And he prays to the Father, keep them from the evil one. The Word of God makes it clear that we are all war fighters. We are all fighting a war. We should understand that our enemy is hostile and he is dangerous. The devil and his demons are sly and cunning. They are wise and perceptive. They are aggressive and attacking. They want to steal, not just your money, but your faith. They want to kill, not just your body, but your hope. And they want to destroy, not just your happiness, but your eternal life. They want to rob you of faith in God. You will not fight and win this battle if you use only human tactics or normal soldiering strategies. For Ephesians 6 teaches us our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So, you understand that your enemy is a spiritual foe who is crafty and insidious, he may use flesh and blood, but you probably will not see him or hear him himself. Only the persons and situations that he's using. You may sense the, sense the devil's presence because of your fear or anger or temptation to selfishness or because of your sin. But probably you will not see him. So how do you fight this unseen enemy? 2 Corinthians 10 the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations of every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You don't have to be a weightlifter or a prize fighter to fight this adversary, the devil. You can be as small and old as Yoda in Star Wars. What you need is faith and to walk in the name of the Lord. The name of God is already an essential part of you for your baptism has given it to you. You are marked with the cross of Christ forever. The character and the person of God are living within you as the light of the world. Point three, I have sent them now. We are ready to receive the marching orders of this gospel reading. Jesus has told us that he's kept us in the name of God. He's prayed that the Father will keep us in the name of God. He wants us in the world, not of the world, and he wants you exactly where he has placed you. 
so that you may fight the good fight of faith right there. His word declares, do not be conformed to this world. That is, do not let this world or your flesh or the temptations of the devil make you conform to this world. Do not think or live or act like this world does. No, you bear the name of the Lord. So continue to be salt and light wherever you go. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus was sent as the one and only Lamb of God, the perfect and holy one who was sacrificed for the sin of the world. That was the purpose for which he was sent, to demonstrate God's great mercy, forgiveness, and love on the cross. But Jesus baptized you into his character and his person, and now Jesus has sent you. I have sent them, said Jesus in verse 18, so you have been sent. Jesus has delegated his work to you. Jesus has multiplied his heart and his hands by sending you. What is Jesus sending you to do today, I wonder? Conclusion. Walk wet. There's a lot going on in this gospel reading. First, we were reminded that we've been immersed in the name of God. So much so that your essence, every fiber of your being, has been submerged, baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the waters of your baptism, God did that to you. And now his character and his person are deeply within you. Like color in fabric, you are fundamentally changed. Next, we were reminded that we're in a battle We may ignore it or forget about it, but our enemy does not ignore or forget about us. He works to discourage and destroy you with sorrow and suffering, with anger and worry, with unforgiveness, isolation, self-pity, with sin, and with shame. Your enemy attacks and accuses you, so fight the good fight of faith. But you do not fight alone. In fact, you have a champion the captain of the host who is more mighty than you possibly can imagine, your Savior, Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit not only watch over you, but live within you and ever help and inspire you. For that reason, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, beloved children of God, make good use of your time on this earth. Be of strong faith and be of good cheer because you bear on your body the sign of your baptism into the name of God. His heavenly character and His holy person live within you. And your heavenly Father keeps on refreshing your baptismal waters, always keeping you in His name. So, so, wherever you go and whatever you face, you will always walk wet in the world.